Good morning, family of the Lord. It's so good to be with you this morning and to be delivering a portion of the scripture this morning. It's really my pleasure and it's really a blessing that the Lord allow me to do this one uh, for his kingdom, for his church right here in East Full Hill Church of Christ. The title of my lesson for this morning is, What is in your hand? Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 5. Thanks, Brother Alex, for the scripture reading. And thanks for Brother Charles for the second prayer. And Brother Ed for the last song. The last song was mentioned as standing in the promises. We need to trust, we need to believe in the promises of God because the promises of God are 100% sure. So we need to continue trusting in the Lord and believing in the Lord. In Exodus chapter 4, we're going to be learning a very good lesson. Moses learn a good lesson right here in this chapter and we also we're going to be learning a good lesson this morning in the chapter 3 in exodus chapter 3 the lord god called moses from a glazing fire from the midst of a bush that's what the chapter 3 verse 12 says uh, he could be the person that the lord would use to deliver his people, or the people of the children of Israel. Remember that the people of Israel were captive in Egypt. And the purpose, that was the purpose for which Moses was born. But when we read this one, or, or I say this one, people think that a God predestinates certain people or certain person to do exactly some things. But the truth is that God not only predestinate certain peoples to do his will, he predestinate everybody. He predestinate you, he predestinate me to serve him, to glorify him, and to do his will. The problem is that we don't want to do his will. That's the problem. But he is calling everybody for his service, same way as he is called the prophet Moses. We said prophet Moses, but was called prophet later. Before that, he was with a simple name, Moses. But these men heard the voice of God and became the deliverer of the children of Israel. But what happened with Moses? When God called him, he started giving and giving excuses. When I was 15 years old, the preacher get to my mother's house to visit her once in a week. And he studied the Bible with her for one hour. And exactly when I heard that he was getting home, I went directly to my room. Because I didn't want to hear the word of God. And he was asking, I heard from my, from, from my room, when he was asking to my mom, where is Carlos? Is no Carlos here? I was in my room just hearing, and I was hearing everything that he was teaching. But I thought in my interior, I'm so young. I don't want compromises. I don't want nothing with God right now. But probably that's true. But you know what? Every time that we hear the word of God, the Lord God is calling us for his service. So I start getting excuses and excuses and excuses because I don't, I don't want anything with the Lord. But the Lord continued calling me and calling me until I obey his voice. So the same, it was almost similar situation with Moses. Moses, when the Lord called Moses, Moses, he started giving excuses. And we, we find right here a couple of questions. Then Moses said, what, 
What if they will not believe me or listen to what I say? Suppose. Suppose if they will not believe me. Suppose, suppose if the children of Israel not believe me or listen to what I say. Suppose that, Lord God. Oh, suppose they may say, the Lord has no appeared to you. Lord, Lord, Lord God, suppose that, that they start telling that, that, that to me. In other words, that Moses was saying is, but, but what if you are wrong, God? Suppose you are wrong, God. You are sending me before Pharaoh. You are sending me before the children of Israel. Suppose you are wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying right here? That, that's almost exactly what Moses was saying in other words. Suppose that. But Brother Ed right now was singing and leading this song, standing on the promises of God. His promises are true. Always. All the time. He's promising things, and the things that he's promising are very true. But what Moses was supposing or saying in other words what but what if you are wrong God but the Lord God in the chapter 3 he had already responded this question of the chapter number 4 in the chapter number 3 he already responded in advance the Lord God responded this question to Moses because the Lord God he knows everything he knows the future. It was good for Moses have no confidence in the flesh when he was saying, I am a man, a simple, a simple man. Suppose they don't will, they don't hear my voice because I am a simple man. It's good when we are thinking, hey, brother, sister, I am a simple man. What, what did I fail in this? That's good. When we have no confidence in the flesh, but it's no good when we don't have, when we lack confidence in God. That's the problem. That is the problem, and that was the problem of Moses. In chapter three, verse twelve, the Lord God told to Moses, "I will certainly be with you." In chapter three. Now, right here, we're reading chapter 4. Chapter 3. He already responded this question. And also, the Lord God told Moses in chapter 3, verse 18. They will hear your voice. The children of Israel, they will hear your voice. But Moses is saying, suppose if they will not believe me or listen to what I say. Now in chapter 4, he's bringing these thoughts. But in chapter 3, the Lord told him, they will hear your voice. That's what I said, that were only and simple excuses. And we are planning as a congregation to go out to spread the gospel, to evangelize people, to give tracts, tracts, flyers. But if we fall before to go out, we start saying, eh, Brother Carlos or Charles or, or, or Brother Rex or elders or the, or the congregation, suppose the people is not going to listen to us. Or suppose that the people is not going to receive the tract. Suppose that. It's going to be a simple excuse that we don't want to go out. And Moses was saying something similar. Suppose that. And the Lord God responded to him. They will hear your voice. 
no excuses for Moses in view of the burning bush. God was with him. He saw a burning bush. He heard the voice of God. And he had a divine encounter with the Lord. In other words, there was no place for Moses to say, but. There's no place for that. There's no but about that. The same is for us. In view that we have the word of God, that is the good news of salvation. In view that we have confidence that this is true. We don't have excuses to worship the Lord, to serve the Lord, to honor the Lord, and to work for the Lord, and to go and obey what the Lord is commanding to us to do. There is no excuse. It wasn't a, a, an excuse for Moses, for Moses either. No excuse for us, neither. The Lord asked a question to Moses. It was an incisive question of the Lord. So the Lord said to him, so the Lord said to Moses, what is that in your hand? A rod. That was Moses' response. And the Lord said, and he said, cast it on the ground. So Moses cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. God question. God question was simple. Moses was so concerned about the future. You are sending me before Pharaoh. We studying some classes some months ago that Pharaoh was a rebel man. We are sending me before a rebel man. You are sending me before rebel people. Your people. But the God question was a simple question. Why we say that was a simple question? Because it's easy to respond to this question. What is in your hand? Moses, in other words, Moses, you are concerned about tomorrow. Okay, forget it about that. Just respond to me this question right now. What is in your hand? This is a simple question. Then the Lord said, another question. That question was strange. The question of the Lord was strange. Why we say that was an strange, a strange question? Because God, he already know. He already know what Moses had in his hand. He already know that. But we read in the Bible sometimes a strange question, for example, when the Lord asked to Adam and Eve, where are you? He already knew where they were. But he's asking this kind of question sometimes, brothers and sisters, because he wants that we understand things. He wanted that Adam and Eve understand in their situation that they were at that moment. And now he's asking to Moses this simple question and a strange question because he wanted to show Moses 
his power, the thing that he is able to do with people. And we don't understand sometimes. We are complaining and saying, I have nothing for the Lord. Oh, I am a simple man. I can serve the Lord. Everyone can do something for the Lord. Everyone. And, and the simplest thing that you have, the Lord can use it for His glory. That's simple like that. And we can say that's a simple question, a strange question, but that was the question of the Savior. That's the question of God. And he has the right to ask whatever he wants to ask. This reflects when the Lord is asking to Moses what is in your hand and asking this question. He, this reflects a precious principle regarding how God uses people. God used what Moses had in his hand. Moses, years, he has spent years in the wilderness tending sheep. But all those years were not useless. All those years have put into Moses' hand things that he could use for God's glory. God didn't use the scepter that was in Moses' royal hand when he lived in Egypt. But now, God is going to use a simple shepherd's staff to do his will. This is amazing. A scepter for lead a kingdom. But God didn't use that. He's going to use a rod, a simple rod, to do his will. What is in our hand? The same way that the Lord God asked to Moses, what is in your hand? The Lord God is asking to us the same question. What is in your hand, Carlos? What is in your hand, Kennedy? What is in your hand, George? Right here, in his full here, Church of Christ. What do you have in your hands? I want to use all the things that you have in your hands to glorify my name, to do my will. What is in our hand. The Lord God likes to use what is in our hand. He wants to use that. Examples. God used what was in Changer's hands. Judges chapter 3 verse 31. Do you know or do you know what was in Changer's hands? The Bible said that was like an stick. It was a uh, an axe goat. It's like an stick to be leading the, the uh, ox. And that was in Changer's hand. And he, the Bible said in Judges 3, chapter 31, that he struck down 600 men with that stick. 600 Philistines. And the Bible said that Changar saved Israel also. Also because Samson did something similar. He killed with a young bone of a donkey. I don't remember exactly the number right now. Of Philistine. But a big amount of Philistine. And he saved Israel or the oppression of the Philistines. Now Changar did exactly the same. And the Lord God used a simple axe gold to do that. That's amazing. That's incredible. What about Davis? 
every, everyone knows the story about David. God used what was in David's hand. Do you remember what was in David's hand? It was a bow and five stone and one sling shot. That was all David had in his hand. But we, he didn't use five stones. He only used one stone. And he killed a giant. Another Philistine. A giant Philistine. So again, the Lord used what was in David's hand. That's the reason that the Lord is asking also to ask. What is in your hands? Church, what is in your hands? I'm going to use that. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 49. We'll read about that. About David. What about this in the New Testament? A little boy. God used five loaves. Five loaves and two fish in the hand of a little boy. John chapter 6, verse 9. God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He only used five loves to feed 5,000 men plus women and children. Imagine, or let's suppose, all these 5,000 men were married. We are talking about 10,000 persons. And let's suppose all these couple had one child. We are talking about 15 persons. But let's stop supposing. Bible said 5,000 men plus children and women. That was the Lord God or the Lord Jesus did in the, with, with the things that were in the hand of a little boy. That's the Lord God that we are serving. So what is in your hand? And the Lord allowed that the Lord do whatever is in your hands. And he's going to be doing amazing things. But Moses, let's come back with Moses. Moses responded to the Lord, to the Lord God. He sent a rod. When the Lord God asked to Moses, what is in your hand? Moses responded, a rod. That rod would part the Red Sea. The army of Egypt was persecuting the children of Israel. And we read in Exodus chapter 14, verse 16. No more place to run, to escape. Because the sea was in front of the children of Israel. And the army of Egypt was behind them. They were be between no, no way to escape. So the Lord God told to Moses, use the road. And point with your road to the sea. And we know the rest of this story. The road would part the Red Sea. That road would strike a rock and see water for four in the desert. They were thirsty. The children of Israel, they were thirsty. They said, we want water. We don't have water here. The Lord God told to Moses, strike a rock and water is going to be poured forth. And Moses did it. And the Bible in 1 Corinthians, that was in Exodus chapter 17, verse 5, and verse 6, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the Apostle Paul said that that rock that Moses struck 
That rock was Jesus Christ. That was most, that's what the Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians. That rock was the Lord Jesus Christ. And that rock will be raised over battle until Israel won. It was a battle against the Amalekites. And the Bible said in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 through verse 13, that when Moses held his arm up, Israel was prevailing. But Moses get tired and his arm get down. And then Amalek was prevailing. And so they decide to bring two men to hold one man, one arm of Moses, and another man, the other arm of Moses. But what was in Moses' hand? The rod. The rod. The Bible said that this rod will be called the rod of God. Not the rod of Moses, the rod of God. God simply used Moses and this rod to glorify his holy name. Do not forget that, that everything that we are doing is to glorify God. It's not to try to get our own glory. If we are, if we are thinking in that way, we are sinning against the Lord. We, are, we must be thinking all the time, oh, everything that we are doing is to glorify his holy name. Simple like that. And that's it. No more than that. And the sign of God to persuade his people. The Lord, God told to Moses, okay, I'm going to show you a sign and you're going to persuade my people. The rod is going to become a serpent. The Lord God didn't say to Moses, it's going to become like a serpent. No. He was. It became as a real serpent. It was so real that Moses was so, was frightened enough that he ran from it when he saw it. He was running. And the Lord God told to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. Moses had faith to reach out with his hand and to grab a snake by the tail. That's to have faith. Do you know that the tail is the most dangerous place to grab a serpent? If you ask to an expert in, in, in grabbing serpents or a snake, he's going to tell you, that's crazy if you try to grab a serpent by the tail. You must try to grab the serpent by its head. Is tell to me that Moses had enough faith to do that one, to grab the, the serpent by the tail. He was afraid, but he got faith. It is the same thing with us, brothers and sisters. Sometimes we are afraid to do things, but we understand and we believe that the Lord is commanding to do that. And that's the reason that we obey and we do the will of the Lord. And, and another thing that we, we, we learn right here is that Moses was frightening enough that he ran from it. He, he grabbed the, the, the serpent by the tail. And, the, and we see that he was 
Nevertheless, he was without problem, unharmed. The serpent didn't bite him. And later on, we see in the Bible that this serpent swallowed the two others or the other serpents or the magicians of Egypt. It was a real serpent. But Moses believed in the Lord God and he trusts him and he obey his voice, his, his voice. Whatever the Lord said, whatever, whatever the Lord commanded him, he did it. He obeyed his voice. And this is amazing. In conclusion, in conclusion this morning, the Lord is calling us and the Lord guarantee us that people is gonna obey our voice if we go out and we start talking to other peoples about him. The same way that he guaranteed to, to Moses, they will hear your voice. And they, when they see this sign, this miracle sign, they're gonna believe and they're gonna realize that I am with you and I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And they are going to understand that I love them, that I haven't uh, uh, forgiven them, they, that I am the God, that I keep my covenant, and I haven't forsaken them. With these same words, we need to be trusting in the Lord and try to do His will and obey his voice and to do his will. This morning, let's remember something, that the Lord can do more with what we have in our hands than what we can do. Let's remember that. And again, the Lord is calling us to repentance. The Lord is calling us to conversion you are not a member of the kingdom of God, the Lord is calling you to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. If you are a member of the kingdom of God or this local congregation and you need so, some prayer, please let us know and we are, we're going to be very happy to, to, to assist you or to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation again and the lesson is yours.